Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I am Scott. You're in the prog corner. Today, we are talking about perfection. Perfect prog albums. I posted something up on my Twitter page Friday, and I've been on Twitter for 14 years, and this post had uh, more traction than anything I've ever posted. It's my number one tweet by far, and I got a whole bunch of great suggestions on Twitter, so I figured I'd do something in my community post on uh, YouTube. So I took a look at all your nominations, and uh, we are going to be ranking the top 25 perfect prog albums. There were a couple here that I was uh, a little surprised that did not get nominated. Um, Mahu Vishnu Orchestra, Birds of Fire, great album from 1973. Nobody mentioned it. Uh, Dream Theater had a couple uh, nominations for Dream Theater, but nobody talked about Metropolis 2, Scenes from a Memory. Uh, PFM, I had a couple of nominations, but nobody mentioned uh uh, uh, per Enemico, their second album, my favorite. Musea Rosenbach, Zarathustra, come on. I expected a little more out of you people than that. And finally, nobody nominated Caravans in the Land of Gray and Pink. That was a little bit odd to me, but I am going to go through the top 25, the perfect prog albums that you guys suggested. I'm ranking them, and I have to agree, all 25 of these are absolutely perfect. So we're going to start with number 25. Yeah, I'm going to show vinyl today. Why not? It's Can and Tago Mago. They're an incredible record from 1971. I just love it. I love this album. Love this band. Yeah, they're Kraut Rock. It's not my normal, you know, cup of tea. They're not capital P Prague, but they're Kraut Rock. And it's amazing. I love this album. It's really, really good at number 24. Yeah, let's talk about 1969's Hot Rats from Frank Zappa. Yeah, this came hot on the heels of uh, We're Only In It For The Money. Uh, a new band here. He's got some different people he's playing with. It's Frank and uh, Ian Underwood is his main uh, compatriot here. There's only one song with vocals, and that's Willie the Pimp sung by Captain Beefheart. But uh, yeah, the rest of this album's all instrumental, and it's all amazing. I could have picked a bunch of Zappa albums, but Hot Rats is perfect. Yes, it is at number 23. It's transatlantic in the whirlwind. Yeah, I could have gone with A Bridge Across Forever, and I almost went with The, the Absolute Universe, their last album. All five of their albums are great, but we're talking about perfect albums, not my personal favorites. My personal favorite is probably The Absolute Universe, but if we're talking about perfection, 79 minutes, one song, it's amazing. Transatlantic, you guys know it, you guys love it. At number 22, we're going to Italy and Banco del Motor. Turo Socorso and their second album, Darwin, which came out in 1972, same year as their debut album, uh, which is fantastic. I could have gone with it. I could have gone with their third album, Io Sono Nato Libero, but I'm going with Darwin because we're talking about perfect albums. And this album is absolutely perfect from start to finish. One of the greatest uh, Italian prog rock albums ever at number 21. A sub-genre that's a little underrepresented here. I will admit that we're going Canterbury, and I'm going with the first Hatfield and the North album. I just love this thing so much. Dave Stewart, Pit Pie, you know who's in the band. Their second album, Broders Club, probably could have been on here too. Uh, Richard Sinclair, and just, oh my goodness, this album is so amazing, Rick Miller. Yeah, I love it. I'm not a huge Canterbury guy, but I will make exceptions when records are that good. At number 20, it sticks. And The Grand Illusion, their seventh album, dropped on the seventh day of the seventh month of 1977. All eight songs are great. It's absolutely perfect. And uh, we're talking about perfect albums. So the fact that they have the little reprise at the end just makes this whole album kind of go full circle. And it's their best album by far, I think, anyway. Number 19. <sighs> It's Camel Mirage. I just did my Camel ranking recently, and I did have Mirage at number one. I think it's perfect. Snow Goose is pretty pretty close to perfect, too. You could make a case for Nude. You could make a case for Moon Madness, but I'm going with Mirage as my entry from Camel for perfection. Absolutely. At number 18. 
Yeah, I went back and forth on which uh, album I was going to uh, show here today because we're doing the one per artist rule, obviously. Uh, it's Vandergrab Generator and God Bluff, their return after they kind of broke up after Pawn Hearts. They come back with uh, the Undercover Man, Scorched Earth Arrow, and Sleepwalkers. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, they're back. Amazing, incredible at number 17. Let's go with something a little more modern and the Neil Morris band and the similitude of a dream. The first of two uh, double albums that uh, told the story of John Bunyan's uh, protagonist as he goes through all these different challenges and travails as he's looking for enlightenment or whatnot. Yeah, don't let the story scare you off. It's amazing. This is peak Neil Morris. Uh, the follow up to this, The Great Adventure, is fantastic. But this, we're talking about perfection. There's not a bad moment. There's not a weak second on this thing. One of the greatest modern prog rock albums. Uh, definitely the similitude of a dream. Absolutely love it. At number 16. We're going with UK's debut from 1978. I could have gone with Danger Money. I love it almost as much with Terry Bazio taking over for Bill Bruford. But, you know, how can you rank that one ahead of this one when you've got Alan Holdsworth? Also, the production on this thing is icy cold, man. It's just, it sends shivers up and down the spine. It's so good. Kind of the last uh, hurrah of the classic era of Prague. And uh, UK did not disappoint. Point, a super group that absolutely lived up to its name. And uh, where are we now at number 15 of the perfect prog rock albums? It's Super Tramp, Crime of the Century. Yeah, it has to be Super Tramp. Their third album, this one came out in 1974. Their first couple albums were different. They were fun, Super Tramp, indelibly stamped. But this one set them on the path to greatness. It is their best album. Breakfast in America is really, really good. Even in the quietest moments is great. I even like Crisis, What Crisis. Super Tramp is amazing. Great, great band. And uh, Crime of the Century, absolutely their masterpiece at number 14. Uh, we're going to the United States of America. It's 1974, and Todd Rundgren decides he wants to be a prog rocker. Well, the previous year, he had put out uh, A Wizard, A True Star, which kind of uh, set the table for his progressive leanings, although half of that album was Philly Soul, and the other half was prog. This is 100% prog, and it's got the 30-minute long uh, epic called The Icon. Oh, how does he slam so much music? Onto one vinyl. Yeah, so the sound quality is not great throughout. It's almost not perfect because of that. Certain albums did get dropped off this perfection list because of uh, production issues. Soft Machine third. Uh, but uh, this one, the greatness just could not be denied. And as such, it's number 14. At number 13, the most modern of the albums I'm picking here for perfection. It's Wobbler from Silence to Somewhere from 2017 their fourth album and for my money still their best album I just love this thing. This has got their new guitar players. So uh, the five-man Wobbler lineup that exists today came into being on this one. Yeah, Dwellers of the Deep is fantastic too. Uh, Rights at Dawn is great, but from silence to somewhere, you've got the, the fantastic sidelong epic. You've got the two longer tracks. Oh man, just dynamite. I love it. It's perfect. We're doing perfect albums. That one fits the bill. Absolutely it does. At number 12 on Perfect Prog Albums. Yeah, you can't talk about perfection and not talk about Misplaced Childhood, the third album from Marillion, uh, the second to last album before Fish went on and did his solo thing. Yeah, it's a concept album. It's got everything you want to be considered a perfect prog album. And artwork matters when you're talking about perfection. Production matters. Everything matters. And everything's perfect on this one. Yeah, it is. And at number 11, we're staying modern. 2015's Hand Cannot Erase. I almost went with The Raven. I went back and forth for a little while on it, but I truly believe this is Stephen Wilson's absolute masterpiece. I think it's perfect. I don't think there's one note I would change on any of these tracks. I don't know if I can say that about To The Bone. I certainly can't say that about uh, The Future Bites. 
but uh, hand cannot erase. Again, the artwork has to be on point. It most certainly is. The musicianship, the songwriting, yeah, it's just dynamite. But now, boys and girls, it's getting really exciting as we get into the top 10. Woohoo! Yes, the top 10 perfect prog albums of all time. And at number 10, it's Mike Oldfield and Omadon. Yeah, I switched this at the last second. You know I was going to go with Tubular Bells. But I went with Omadon because I actually prefer it. I listened to both over the weekend. I actually listened to Incantations and Herges Ridge also because I wanted to make sure I got the right one. I think I got the right one. And I even love that last little vocal part up on that horse. Some people hate that. I think it's a really great way to end an amazing album. Peak Oldfield, just dynamite, Omadon. The return to Omadon came out a few years ago, and it was really good, too. Yes, it was. At number nine, boys and girls, another band that I had to go back and forth on. I ended up landing on Left Overture, but, you know, regular viewers of this channel know how much I love their debut album, and I love Song for America. I love Mask. I love The Point of No Return. I, I love Monolith, but... At the end of the day, this is about perfect prog albums, not about Scott's favorite prog albums, right? And this thing here is absolute perfection. Every song is great. I love it very, very much. Even Carry On Wayward Son, after all these years, it still sounds great to me. It really does. At number eight... Let's go to Canada. Yeah, and it's Hemispheres. Why didn't I pick my favorite Rush album? Well, again, this is perfect prog albums. We're not talking about my favorite prog albums. My favorite Rush album will always be uh, A Farewell to Kings, but is it perfect? Probably not. Uh, this one here is perfect. You've got the sidelong epic starting it off, and then you got the three shorter tracks on side two, Circumstances of the Trees and La Via Strangio. Does it get any more perfect than Hemispheres? I really don't think it does. Just fantastic. I love it. You know I love it. At number seven, it's Pink Floyd and Wish You Were Here. Again, I almost went with Dark Side. I almost went with Animals, which is probably my uh, favorite, but uh, we're talking about perfection. You cannot get any more perfect than this here record. I love it from start to finish. Uh, this is them at their most progressive. This is them at their absolute best. Yeah, you know the album. You don't need me to sell you how great it is. Okay, at number six is Gentle Giant Octopus. Yet another band. I went back and forth. I had a bunch of requests and nominations and suggestions for like three friends and uh, acquiring the taste, and the power and the glory and freehand. But ultimately, I went with Octopus because this is the one that's got the absolute perfect lineup. Ray's still in the band. Uh, John just joined the band on drums, so this is my favorite lineup. This is my favorite album. And the artwork, that Roger Dean cover. Why in the world would the U.S. record company go with the... Uh, with the other one is beyond me, but you know, whatever. At number five, it's Brain Salad Surgery from Emerson, Lake, and Palmer from 1973. Their fourth studio album, their fifth overall. Uh, I had nominations for all five. I had nominations for the debut, for Tarkus, for Pictures at an Exhibition, for Trilogy, and of course, for Brain Salad Surgery. And uh, I opted to go with Brain Salad Surgery again because we're talking about perfect. Perfection. I don't think the debut was perfect. Uh, side two, Atarkis, probably not perfect. The production on uh, pictures and the exhibition may not be great. So that left me with Trilogy and Brain Cell and Surgery and basically just flip a coin. But look at that album cover. So you know uh, that artwork plays a role. And I think that's probably what took Brain Cell and Surgery uh, over the top. Yeah, it did. At number four, we're getting to the nitty gritty now. The final four. Who do who do we have here in the top four? Well, I think you know what the bands are, but which records did I pull? At number four, from 1973, it's Lark's Tongues and Aspic, the first album with this new reformed lineup, Bill Bruford on drums, and you've got the great John Wetton singing. Uh, Robert Fripp was never more crazy and frenetic, and this album just scared the daylights out of me when I first bought this. I seen the back, and I seen, okay, this is where Bill Bruford ended up, and uh, yeah, I, to this day, it still frightens me a little bit, but I love it. At number three... 
It's Jethro Tull and Think is a Brick. Oh, yeah. I had tons of nominations for this, but I also had nominations for Stand Up, uh, Aqualung, uh, A Passion Play, and uh, a whole bunch of nominations for Songs from the Wood. Uh, but I just, I just, we're talking about perfection, perfect prog albums. To me, it doesn't get any more perfect than Thick as a Brick. One song laid out across two sides and that final 90 seconds. Oh my goodness. Perhaps the best 90 seconds of music I've ever heard in my life. Right here. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. And now we get to the top two. At number two, I'm going with Foxtrot from Genesis. I know a lot of people really wanted Selling England by the Pound, but we're talking about perfection. And, you know, is More Fool Me going to be included in a perfect album? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But all I do know is this one here has got Supper's Ready on it. And I love every single second of this album from start to finish. Watcher of the Skies. Oh, come on, man. It doesn't get any better than Foxtrot, does it? Or does it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does, boys and girls, because I've got one album that I think is even more perfect than Foxtrot. Yeah, you know what it is. I led off with this in my uh, Twitter uh, post that I put up uh, Friday or whatever. This was my suggestion that got the ball rolling. And yeah, it's not my favorite Yes album. Uh, anyone that watches this channel knows Tales from Topographic Oceans is my favorite Yes album. I think this one is perfect. Perfection because of the artwork, because of the songwriting, because of the production, because of the musicianship. Yeah, Tales is my favorite album of all time, but it's not perfect. I understand it's not perfect. I understand that there are blemishes in Tales. There's no blemishes on Close to the Edge, not one. It's absolute perfection. And uh, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, that's my wrap up of Prague Perfection. Perfect Prague albums as nominated by you. Anyway, let me know in the comments what I forgot. I know I forgot a bunch of stuff and that's the whole idea here. But you know, anyway, I love you guys. Have a great day. Peace in the Middle East. God save the king. See you next time.